Good evening, everyone, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time for a Friday evening. These broadcasts are live every Friday at about 9.30 p.m. Eastern, and this program is designed to interact with you with your questions and comments related to the Bible, and we'll try to respond as well as possible by going to the Bible. If you're calling us by phone with your questions or comments, dial 209-647-1600 and enter the access code 181610, followed by the pound key, which gets you into conference. Then press star 6 and then 1. If you're using Skype, press the free conference call button, then press the dial pad button and enter access code 181610 and press your pound key. And to get in line to ask a question, press star 6 and one. And if you're using Pal Talk, you simply go to eBible Fellowship's room, and once inside the room, you can raise your hand, and when you're asked to, you can post your question. And so, with our Bibles at the ready, it's now time to turn things over to our speaker for this Friday evening questions and answers time, and say hello to Chris McCann. Good evening, Chris. Thank you, and uh, again, everyone is welcome to share what's ever on your mind by um, by uh, contacting us in ways that were just mentioned. And I'll try to respond by turning to the Bible, as the Bible is the Word of God. So now at this time, if uh, you do have a question, please give us a call. Now let's go to the first person on the phone tonight. Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Friday Night Question and Answer. Our first, Our first question, question tonight, tonight comes, comes from, from Sherman Sherman. Blount. I have a question, if you don't mind. Are judgment, mercy, and faith tithes that we are to give at this time? Please read Matthew 23, verse 23. Matthew 23, and verse 23. Three says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted I mean, the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Well, um, the, the tithe is, is something where God has indicated, look, all right, you're making um, a small offering to me in in these things. But however, uh, while it's nice that you're offering me mint and anise and cumin, you are not offering the weightier matters of the law, such as judgment, mercy, and faith. And, and, and so... Uh, God is just indicating that they're um, they're they're not pleasing Him, and it's the same thing uh, in the Old Testament when um, sacrifices would would be offered. And remember, um, King Saul he he was uh, fearful to go to battle without first offering a sacrifice. However, Samuel, the one qualified to offer the sacrifice, did not come, apparently, in the time that was specified, seven-day period. And so Saul himself offered the sacrifice. And, um, and then, um, let's see, where, where was that? Well, uh, I can't put my hand on that, but, oh, uh, that was, that's 1 Samuel 13. And and then God indicates um, in, in verse 11, Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down, now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto Jehovah. I force myself, therefore, and offer to burn offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of Jehovah thy God, which he commanded thee. Um, 
I, you know, I, I think the it's the other instance um, that I was looking for when God gave Saul commandment to destroy Amalek, and he did not do it uh, completely, and and they spared the sheep, and they spared King Agag, and this is in 1 Samuel 15, and it says in verse 20, And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of Jehovah, and have gone the way which Jehovah sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto Jehovah thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath Jehovah as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Jehovah? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Jehovah, he has also rejected thee from being king. And this is the fault of Israel. They would meticulously try to keep the Sabbath, or they would they would religiously uh, offer sacrifices. They would offer tithes and so forth but they were not obeying God in the more important areas of the gospel of the Bible. They were not obeying his voice in spiritual things, in understanding, for instance, that sacrifice did not make them righteous, but, but it was the Messiah who would make them righteous. And, and I think that's um, one of the things that Christ is putting his finger on, you're, you're doing one thing, which may be according to the law, but you're failing to do other things that, um, that, that are more spiritual in nature, and you're not seeing them, and that's because of spiritual blindness. But thank you for your question, and uh, is there another question from Pal Talk? Yes. Can you please check and read Revelation 16:12? Question is, who are the kings of the east in Revelation 16:12 and what will be re- what will be prepared? Well, Revelation 16 is a chapter uh in which the seven uh, messengers who come out of the temple are pouring out the seven vials of the seven last plagues, and it it uh, it it really has everything to do with Judgment Day, um, and and the period we're in for however long Judgment Day will last, as as God identifies a, a long period of time at times as a day. And one of the vials is poured out. Um, let's see that in in verse ten, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the sea of the beast, and that would be the throne of the beast, Satan, and that that is found in the churches, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. So after the tribulation. The kingdom of Satan, the, the called the beast during the Great Tribulation, is darkened immediately after the sun is darkened. And there is a spiritual darkness that has come upon all of his kingdom. And then verse 11, and blaspheme, and by the way, the word blaspheme just means to speak evil of, and blaspheme the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now the great river Euphrates is a synonym for Babylon. 
And um, it, it is the river that, yes, it, it, uh, it, it is the boundary of Israel, but it's a river that belongs to Babylon like the Nile belongs to Egypt. And earlier in the book of Revelation, there were, um, in Revelation 9, it says in verse 14, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels or messengers which are bound in the great river Euphrates, and and that is um, a language indicating the the elect people of God who were to be saved were held captive in Babylon, and now it's the end of the great tribulation or the end of the seventy years. And the captives are set free. All the elect become saved. And so the Euphrates, the great river Euphrates, is a synonym for Babylon. And Babylon, according to Revelation 18, it, it becomes a picture of the kingdom of Satan, this world. And now the vial of God's wrath is being poured out upon Babylon, the great river Euphrates, or the whole world, and the water thereof was dried up, and that is the gospel water. Uh, God uses many different ways of saying the same thing. He, he talks about uh, no more sound of the harp, or sound of the millstone, millstone shall not be heard, or the light of the candle. Uh, will not shine any more in her. Or he says, the voice of the bride and the bridegroom shall be heard no more in her. Or he says, the sun is darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars fall from heaven. The light is out. The water is dry. The work of the individual on the millstone ceases. The music stops playing, and, uh, all these things and many more are just various ways that God is saying the same thing again and again. It's judgment day on the world, and there is no more gospel going forth unto salvation. And so the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, the kings of the east would be a reference to the true believers, and uh, the east is is a direction that identifies with God. Um, we we won't go through it, but just look up the word east, and you'll find. Um, many times that, that it identifies with Christ or identifies with God. For instance, the lightning shines from the east to the west. It, it, it's the direction Christ comes from. And the, the kings of the east um, are the true believers. We're made prophets, priests, and kings. And we are kings of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, whose direction is from the east. And, and, and so the, it, it, what God is basically saying is that it is a necessity to dry up the water of the great river Euphrates or the world, Babylon, in order to bring about his judgment. And in a way... He's indicating that uh, he, uh, he, he's really drawing a, um, a parallelism with the drying up of the Red Sea. Uh, the, the Red Sea dried up and prepared a way for the children of Israel to cross into the Promised Land. And, and so God is saying, now this has to take place. I must dry up the gospel water of the earth. It is an event that must happen before the children of my kingdom 
all the elect, the great multitude that I have saved, may cross over into heaven. And uh, that's, uh, that's what that verse is teaching. But thank you for uh, raising that verse. And do we have any other questions from Pal Talk? Yes. Echo 2011 asks, in Proverbs 24, 1, I understand the first verse, but can you explain what the, the second verse where the Lord is telling us to not desire to be with evil men? Can this be taken literally? I'm sorry, what was that verse again? Proverbs 24, 1. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. And the question is concerning the second part of this verse, not desiring to be with evil men? Yes. Well, uh, let, let's, let's think about it. Um, be not thou envious against evil men. Now, first of all, who is an evil man? And, you know, we're, we're sort of conditioned, we're trained to think of murderers and terrorists and, and the worst sort. But actually, that's not who God's talking about. He's talking about mankind, because all have sinned, all have fallen short of his glory, all are guilty, all are evil. And it's only when he uh, makes a change in an individual that that they would no longer be considered an evil man, even though they could still do evil. But this is basically saying, um, do not envy people around you. Uh, actually, look at the previous chapter, Proverbs 23. It says in verse 17, let not thine heart Envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of Jehovah all the day long, for surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Those are some very helpful verses, because it, it, here we are in the world, and, and all around us are sinners, evil men. And what are they going after? Evil sinful things there's the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and and just all kinds of things that are contrary to what god says men will say it's fine to um involve yourselves in fornication it's fine to involve yourselves in in this day they even say in homosexuality it's fine to involve yourselves with some drinking and, and having fun. Go ahead, go dancing and live it up. And, and on and on. These things are very acceptable, very common. They're normal to the world, but they are not normal to the child of God. They're all contrary to what the Bible says. And not only the outward acts, but even the inward thoughts. As Jesus said, whoever looks on a woman to lust has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And, and so uh, we, we uh, need this direction from God where he's telling us, look, if, it'd be an excellent verse to memorize. Whenever you look to the left or look to the right, you look off the path, and you you see something like like a beautiful house or car or or woman or just something that you know you should not be uh interested in then think of this verse let not thine heart envy sinners but be thou in the fear of Jehovah all the day long that is continue to do it God's way it it's right it's good it's the proper thing. And why? Well, of course, because it is right and good, but God also gives us additional um, motivation. 
In verse 18, for surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Theirs will be. All the, the things that are being lusted after will be gone, and even the world itself will pass away. And you'll have nothing if you you go after that. But the expectation of the child of God is eternal life. And, and so continue doing it humbly and and continue doing things God's way, being obedient, um, beseeching the Lord for strength in the inner man to keep his commandments, to do his will. And that, uh, that will work out uh, always for the best. So in Proverbs 24, 1, Be not thou envious against evil men or sinners, neither desire to be with them. It's Friday night. And where are they? Well, if you're maybe a younger person, your friends are perhaps at the bar. Perhaps they're going dancing. Or it, how about it's Sunday afternoon? Where are they? Well, it's football season coming. They're going to the game. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be fun? Come on down. Come on, join us. Let, let's go watch the, the football team. And and no, no, don't desire that. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Don't, don't uh, think that they're enjoying something good. There's nothing good about sin. It's all vanity. It's all vain show. The three hours passes, and and there's there's no improvement in anyone. You can watch anything, and and you can drink, and there's there you're nothing better at all. It's all a big lie. It's all a puff of smoke. It, that's the nature of the world, and so God is uh, just giving us um, wise counsel. Don't desire to be with them. Look at verse 2 of Proverbs 24. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. That, it, when you boil it all down, and, and you come to the end of it. Yeah, it looks good maybe at, at the moment, at the time. But when you get down to the end of the matter... It's destruction, and that's all it is. That That's all it comes down to. It's, it's just nothing and emptiness. That's the nature of the world. But thank you for bringing up that verse. And um, let's see, we have time for one more question. Are there any more questions from Pal Talk? Not at present. Okay. All right, well... Um, since there is no more questions, I'd like to thank everyone for sharing your uh, your questions and for bringing up the verses we had an opportunity to look at. Lord willing, uh, we'll be meeting together uh, online with our online Sunday fellowship beginning at 12 noon Eastern time this Sunday and uh, also continuing with our Bible study again on Monday 9 p.m. Eastern till 9.30 throughout the week, Monday through Friday. And then, again, next Friday we'll have this question and answer time. Now, one other thing, we uh, uh, have been uh, adding a Bible quiz, question and answer. I'm not sure if it'll air tonight, but right after the Bible study, uh, that has been playing. And, and I know some people pop right out, and you perhaps weren't aware of that. But just to make you aware, um, if it's not tonight, uh, we do hope to have this on regularly um, in, after studies in, in the days to come. Well, have a good night, and may the Lord's perfect will be done. Thank you so much for joining us during this Friday evening questions and answers time. The broadcast is heard live over the Internet beginning at approximately 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You may also join our Sunday afternoon broadcast of eBible's Questions and Answers beginning at approximately 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Until then, may the Lord grant us His wisdom and may His perfect will be done. Have a blessed evening. Good night.